<laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Radio Dead Air Tech Q and A. Uh, I am Nash. I've been doing this technical nonsense professionally for about oh ten years or so. With me is my producer Mike. He is also works in the field of IT. Tonight we'll be uh, going over some of your questions, looking at a little bit of the news, and let's to start off with. Um, Folks, I know a lot of you are sponsors of mine on Patreon, which ah yes, I I greatly appreciate, and it it helps keep the show going. But I would be horrifically remiss if we didn't cover this first bit of news. Um, Patreon done got hacked. Yep, they're not the only ones, and they're they're actually the small one this week that got hacked. Yeah. They were the first in the news, but a couple others came out too. So in case you didn't hear, you, you've probably have heard, I, th I think Patre Patreon was pretty good about getting the word out to users at least. Um, the entire Patreon site, about 15 gigabytes worth of password data, donation records, and source code is taken off the website. Now, I want to break down to you what this, this means for you. Okay. Uh, first, we should note before anyone panics too badly, they are saying that none of the passwords, uh, or excuse me, none of the credit card information was gotten. Right. And uh, the passwords were encrypted, and how they said they were encrypted seems like it's pretty solid, but. Yeah. All right. Yeah. First off, if you are a Patreon user, change all change your password. If you use the same Patreon password anywhere else, god damn it, don't do that. Change 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 your Patreon password. That's that's number one. Um, yeah, uh, don't you don't have to worry about your credit card information. From what I understand, Patreon is actually really smart about how they get uh, credit card information. They don't ever actually get access to your credit card. What they get is a token that allows them to process a credit card transaction. It's a security token that only lasts for a certain period of time. It lets them uh, process the credit card, sends it along. They don't get access to your entire credit card. They may have the last four digits, though. But that that has not apparently been leaked. Um, also, any of your private messages between yourself and other creators or other people on the system those are likely out there so yeah but unless you put something really sensitive in there yeah and um, who is sending sensitive messages on patreon messages anyway i don't know i mean i could see someone being a real ass to someone in in private messages yeah and maybe that getting leaked but the rest of it you know you know it's yeah. all hey i love your stuff could you do this right sort yeah. of thing is my guess now uh the passwords now this is all, this is only applying in users here the passwords are encrypted with bcrypt which is fairly secure stuff. And it was salted properly, which True. is a, a computer term for saying when they set up the random number generator to encrypt passwords, they didn't pick something like one as their random number to start with. It's the same salt I have on my luggage. Um, the, the, however, um, this is similar to the Ashley Madison hack in which they got all of Ashley Madison's stuff on the website, the entire source code and everything, which looks like what happened here, which may mean breaking that encryption might be a little easier than it would normally otherwise. Again, awesome. change, yeah. change your passwords. You should be fine. Uh, the one thing to note about this hack, and this is just from a technical standpoint, uh, the reason it happened, and it, me, from the time they were notified, hey, the website has an insecurity, to when they got hacked was five days. Yeah. It's a very narrow window when you're talking about a uh, corporate response. And the way it was hacked was they had some debug version of software running on the live site. You're never supposed to do that because the debug software will have options in there that let you do stuff that you would never do in live. Like, I don't need a password to run a query. Yeah, think of debugging in software terms as cheat codes in yes. video games. They, they, they give you God mode sometimes if you know which which buttons to push. And that's that's what happened. Now, apparently, they Patreon claimed that this was 
a copy of the of the actual server they had up. They were running tests on, but it was had access to the internet, and that's what people got into, which is why the debugging and shit happened. But however, there's another security company claiming that this was on the live site. They had like five days notice. In any event, it's you know this is one of those things that I want to be a little bit. I'm having a hard time being pissed about it. Yeah. Well, Someone, at least we're it, pissed with Patreon anyway. Uh, the part and, and the reason I'm not pissed with them uh, is because unlike, say, Ashley Madison, they were like upfront. Yeah, we got hacked. They didn't try to hide it. They said, "Fix. We fixed it. It's not going to happen again. At least this way. Please change your passwords." And this is what we got got out. And they were very upfront and open with it, which is good. Um. Now, for us people who actually use Patreon as creators. It's a little, it's a bit of a different story. Um, they have access to our tax records, which we have to submit because Ooh. we have to put in, it's, it's a W99 or W099 or what the fuck is that form? It's the, the self-employed form we have to submit. And my social security number's on there. And my home address is on there. And everybody else who's on Patreon in this fucking leak. So, ouch. I'm hoping that now Patreon hasn't made any uh, mention of this yet, but I'm really hoping I get like some credit protection or something for a year or so, because th the nasty thing about getting that social security number and my address is someone could sign up for or attempt to sign up for a credit card in my name and the 1099, that's it, W1099. Um, someone could attempt to sign up for it in my name and either they'll get a credit card in my name and run a bunch of fucking charges and I'll take the credit hit for it. Or they'll fill out a bunch of forms and each time you put in a credit card application that goes on your credit report and it lowers your credit score. Did you know that? If you didn't know oh, yeah. that, you guys in college who are not aware of this shit, you go out like Best Buy. And they're like, you want a credit card? Sure. And then you go over to Target. And they're like, you want a credit card? Sure. Every single time you saw you just filling out the form and running the application for a credit card, that sends a flag up. They run a credit check on it. And for I don't understand why, but the act of running a credit check lowers your credit score. Yeah. So this could be kind of a shitty situation for some of us creators i've changed i spent today going through changing a fuck bunch of passwords just to be on the safe side i changed my bank password i changed um my google i changed my email password i changed my adsense password i changed a whole bunch of st unrelated stuff just completely out of paranoia security paranoia yeah yeah i was like fuck what i haven't changed this password in six months oh let's change it is it completely unrelated? Yeah, but fucking change it anyway. So, yeah, just... Uh, again, I do appreciate everyone who uses Patreon. It should be fine now. No worries. They have it fixed. And honestly, this has happened with... There's no way to predict which sites this could happen with. Yeah. Uh, another big, you know, like Scott Trade got hit this week. Yeah. Uh, what was that? That was me making with my lips. Okay. That was my mouth, Mike. Okay. My well, mouth. Sound like a small animal in your room. <laughs> uh, but yeah, Scott Trade, and there was one other site that got hit this week with a password hack. Uh, I'm trying to remember who it was. Uh, there's Scott Trade. Um, hey, it's in the news. You just look out there for it. It's it's someone. Uh, relatively well known. I just don't remember the name right this second. Uh, we're getting to a point where we're going to just need two factor on everything. It's it's honestly at the with the way everything is going and the hacks just keep piling up and piling up. T Mobile. T Mobile. Shit. We're we're going to get to a point where two factor. It's going to be like chip and pin with credit cards. Every like every major site, like your bank will start doing it. I'm pretty sure Google's gonna start making it mandatory at some point. 
especially now that they're trying to push their money. Apple is trying to push, you know, Apple Pay and whatnot. They're getting serious yeah. about it. I'm pretty sure we're going to see most websites get sick and tired of the shit and move to forcing their users to use some form of two-factor identification in order to use their site because otherwise we're, this is just going to keep happening. And two fact, even two factors, no guarantee a hundred percent of the time, but it's a hell of a lot safer than just a password. Oh yeah, absolutely. Cause it's just, it's, it's what you know and what you have. Well, I say, oh, okay. In case people don't know when I say two factor, those of you who play MMOs are probably already familiar with this. A lot of MMOs offer this. I know WoW does. Yep. I know uh, Star Wars on uh, the Old Republic does. It's either a little doodad gizmo or it's an application for your phone. So I was gonna, I was gonna pull out my uh, Warcraft one, but I misplaced it. I have the app on my phone anyway. So yeah, it's it's uh, something that has sets a security token with a specific window that you have to enter in addition to your name and password and it's normally a device like on your cell phone which is something that's you're going to have so it's considerably more secure than just a, a password, password but or a pin let's move on because uh, it's going to make me sad well man did everybody hear about people oh god these morons people god what a stupid idea Man, when I heard about people, I thought, God, making a camera for someone's front door? Wow, that's just going to be a whole lot of a... Oh, wait. You mean the other people? In yeah. addition... Okay, let, let me just... Chris Tutor, I, I believe it's how you say his name. Um just entered a competition in the UK, $150,000 prize, and his invention is a virtual caller ID for your home. And it's a little camera that attaches to your, your front door and you'll be able to look at people. And, I, and it's called People. P-E-E-P-L-E. The same week, these jacket. What is with these women? These complete imbecile women. Um, well, they think they've got a good idea. <laughs> so, if you haven't heard what this is, I'm gonna interrupt. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. It is Yelp for people. Is how it's it, for individuals. It's how it's been described. So, yep. someone could go out there and go, "I'm setting up a page for for Mike." I don't necessarily have to know about it. They decide to do it for me. Um, and people can rate and review me as a person. Yes. Now, what they've said is that uh, unless I register there, someone else registers me. Yeah. The, all they, uh, they, they can if they have your phone things. number, if they have your phone number, they can register you for the service without you doing shit. And I'll start getting text messages about you've been rated this way now. They say, until I sign up, I can't get negative ones. I don't know if that means I can't get one and two star reviews or if they or sitting in a, they're not going to have someone sitting in an office reviewing these things because that's too much work. Or someone could put up like a five star review and then write, Mike is a huge piece of shit. Or a five star review of Nash. Nash is a much better person now that he's stopped molesting border collies. <laughs> See? See? There, there, there's, I mean, there. there we love each other. Um, yeah. there, there's, there's, it's a complete, there is no opt out, essentially. Yeah, there is no opt out. They say you can't, you can't unsign up for it. And to remove anything you think is negative, you have to sign up for it. You have to challenge it like a fucking DMCA takedown. You yeah. have to, to write to the person who made the negative review and try to convince them not to post it. And if you can't, it goes up anyway. This is just, it, this is yeah. horrible. Now, the thing that gets me, uh, the, from my reading of it, because it is phone number based, if someone types in the wrong phone number, they put in my phone number when they mean Bob Jones's phone number, 
Uh, and they start, I start getting reviews for Bob Jones. I'm like, well, I'm not Bob. <laughs> what this tells me is that also that I should get there first and put in my own phone number, but not my real name. I should put in Spartacus Jones <laughs> or Han Solo or something like that and put in a fake profile, but my number. That way when someone goes, well, I don't like Mike, I have his number. That number's already in use. Oh, they can't put that up for me. It's not a bad plan. Now, here's, here's where the plan gets even better. I suspect, this is, this is just my suspicion, I don't have any proof on this, I just suspect that some of the people in Anonymous are not gonna like this service. No. And I would suspect that some of the people in Anonymous having access one way or another to a number of servers and things can write a script that will sign up a bunch of phone numbers automatically for randomly generated names, thus blocking off those people who may want to use the service properly or illicitly from using those numbers because they've already been claimed by Spartacus Jones 1 through 9,999. <laughs> or Bob Jones, Frank Turner, whatever. They, you know, they, they, they built hey their now. script or whatever. Leave Frank to use, alone. Say, the U.S. Census data to gen randomly generate first and last names for phone numbers. So suddenly, this site has built up this huge database of people that don't actually exist, except by statistical. Uh, you know, we randomly assigned Frank Jones to an actual Frank Jones. Whoops, happens, uh, and <laughs> goes from there. So it looks like it'd be really easy to spoof things from a distributed denial of functionality, not service, functionality. Now, I am not suggesting that anyone, absolutely not suggesting anyone go out there and do this, but it'd be funny. <laughs> well, no, well, the, the, the point I was making here with this article is um, the people who designed people, the device. Let's, let's call it people. Well, yeah. Just, um, that's what it is. He, and that's what they should have gone with. He already trademarked the term. He already did all... What's the... If you come up with an idea for something, and you come up with a name for it, what's the first thing you do with that name? Trademark it wherever you're going to use it? Actually, Google it! Oh, See if you. anybody else is using that shit. That's the very first thing you do. If you go on Google, you say, is this, is someone else using this name? Is it legally registered for someone else? You In the same Google. field. In the same field. Well, no, even still, you have to worry because there are um, occasions where companies have had uh, a name. Let's just rent Coke and something else calls itself Coke, but it's not. Well, they have grounds because even though it's a completely different uh, item, it could potentially reflect badly on theirs. They have grounds to take you to court over that. And that's exactly what happened here because this poor guy's device has nothing to do with their shit. But all this week, all the coverage has been about the internet lo basically lost its fucking mind. About Reasonably, I think so on this one. About the, 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 just the, the idea of this, this horrible application. And already that that's... Cause so the people doing people are not very smart people. I, I don't know about I can't say that they're not smart. I can say that they are not uh social media adept based on their responses to things. They may think, oh, this is a wonderful response, and uh the internet has said no, that's not. Uh, here's the they, other th they, they come across very tone deaf. Here's the other thing. This is, again, striking me like we talked about a few weeks ago, this whole take the money and run. It's already been, there's no app release. There's no service out yet. It's valued at $7.8 million. It, it, but it's nothing. Yes. $7.8 million. They haven't even started getting users yet. They have no app in place. They just have this framework. Yeah, Market I, I valuation of seven point eight million. What the fuck? I also saw something where they were upset because uh, Facebook's uh, API uh, application programmer interface, uh, basically how apps tie into Facebook, 
for, the, for those in the world, uh, uh, doesn't allow them to scrape data just with a phone number. They can't go, you know, you've given us this phone number, we can't use that to go into Facebook and just pull all your data. Wow. I know, they were very upset about that. They were also upset that people on, they couldn't remove people's negative opinions on them on Facebook, even though they really wanted to. Irony! Well, they were deleting posts and uh, comments on the thing, but I don't think they were able to delete them fast enough. No. And I think they eventually went into lockdown on their page. Yeah. Oh, the irony there. Oh. Uh, but this is, this is, uh... I mean, don't get me wrong. There's times when I've wanted to let people know in a, in a very organized way. This is what kind of asshole this other person is. Uh, but I'm not sure this is the way I think, you know, just one-on-one -on -one spread the news is, is a better way in many cases than going, uh, this guy I used to work for is a real dick. Don't work for him. Well, the problem here is you're introducing a system. And anytime you introduce a system, which right, includes ratings. Yeah, systems are always, systems are designed to function. They're not designed to do nuance. Systems are not very big on nuance. They're, they're, they're to get th things from point A to point B. They don't really care how it gets from A to B, just as long as it gets from A to B. And that, that, that's, that systems are always, uh, uh. So yeah, it's it's 7.8 million market valuation on nothing. Yeah. This oh, our economy's in fucking trouble. That can can you well, hear? Well, yeah, Nash, I, I would like to point out they're Canadian. <clears throat> so, was that 6.8 million dollars? American or Canadian dollars, yeah. Or was it 6.8 million maple leaves or or <laughs> Moose antlers or whatever <laughs> Canadians use for money. You're going to get, fuck, I got, I've got, I already got Tara pissed off half the planet. You're going to try and piss off the other half for me too? Canada is not half the planet. <laughs> and, but I will, I will say this to any Quebecois listening, you're not French. Uh, all right. One more on the news front. Um, Amazon has of late been getting into very, very heavily in the past year, um, trying to get into the device market and the streaming media market. And they've really pushed Amazon Prime. They're really all about the Amazon Fire Stick and all their, their devices. Well, you may notice that Amazon Prime isn't available on certain iDevices like the Apple TV or the Nexus Player. Yeah, yeah. Well, Amazon took a, uh, a, a rather curious turn when it came I to that. I think I know what this is. Amazon has opted to ban sales on Amazon's site of Apple and Google video streaming devices because they're not compatible with Amazon Prime. And it's not just Amazon themselves selling it. They, they are telling people who run third-party shops through Amazon, we will delist Apple TV and, and, and Google's Chromecast. I thought Chromecast 2 could handle Amazon Prime. Yeah, well, the, the quote is, they don't interact well. Ah. So essentially, because Prime Video runs like shit on their devices, their software, mind you, they're not going to allow anybody to sell a device that their software doesn't run well. Yeah, I'm seeing, I've decided to look up uh, headlines and the first headline I noticed was Amazon banning the Chromecast is unbelievably stupid. <laughs> wow, that's a good headline. But yeah, no, it's, yeah. they want people to go to their, what is it? What was their app? Not their app, they're, they have a device. The to Fire do. Stick. Yeah. The Amazon Fire Stick. Do you know anyone who has a Fire Stick? I don't know a single person who uses the Amazon Fire Stick. Neither do I. I mean, I have a Chromecast one and a, um, what's the other one? It's right here. Roku? Yeah, Roku. I really never use the Roku, but uh, I got one anyway, um, just in case. And uh, 
Uh, but yeah, no, I don't need a third one. Uh, have you seen the new Chromecast? Uh, I'm going to be ordering one right after the show. And it's still $35. Yeah. That thing's fucking amazing. I don't know. I think the Fire sells for like 50 or so. Or it's, it's close and comparable in price. But the Chromecast does so much more. And this new updated version has so many more things. So instead of... Here's what's going on. Amazon is... Since it's one of the largest distributors, instead of trying to improve their product, instead of trying to improve their software, which... Isn't that what they 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 have the library? Isn't that the big thing? Instead of doing that, they're just outright banning Apple TV and Google Chromecast sales. Yeah, and I I don't I don't know other than an Amazon Prime Video that they offer anything that like Roku doesn't. No, it's essentially Amazon Prime is just a different version of Netflix. Yeah, well they have Netflix on there. It's one of the things they offer. Yeah. So, uh, I'm just not getting. You know, is I, is there market? Is there room in the market for three competing products? And I don't really think there is. Though I think Roku will probably be the first one to go. Yeah, Roku. Roku, we've got there first, but Roku's kind of like TiVo now. TiVo got there first, and now you know everybody can do it. Roku got there first, and and. Not to say the Roku's are bad products. I love the Roku product. When it came out, they they were great, but hasn't kept up. No, hasn't really kept up with it. But it it's you know for Amazon, it, the the fact that they control control the marketplace like this. Amazon is a huge online retailer. Number one, do you saw what happened with their Fire Phone, right? Uh, the phone that they tried to get people to buy and no one bought it and they dropped the price to like a dollar and still no one bought it. Still no one bought it. They have tons of them sitting around. You know what? Oh, absolutely hilarious. I was watching a show on Amazon Prime. Um, it's called Hand of God. And I saw, I've seen that one. That's um, It's got um, Ron Perlman. That's the one. I was going to say played Hellboy, but you beat me to his name. In the very second episode, someone is using an Amazon Fire phone and I went, I didn't think this was science fiction. <laughs> this is like an alternate re history thing. It's, no, here. it's it's called product placement. <clears throat> yeah, well, they're paying for the show. They get their product put in. Yeah, but it's funny that in the time when they were filming the show and the time at, at to, to when it was actually released, the product completely imploded. But might my... still buy an Amazon Fire Phone on Amazon? No, I don't think so. But my point is that this is not a. I mean, to anyone outside, all this looks like is Amazon is being petty. You know? Yeah. It's it's, and that doesn't instill me with a lot of confidence in their products. If their only way to you know really compete with their own things is to push the others aside. And it's not like Apple is going to be hurting for this. They'll be like, people will buy it on our website. It's no big deal. Yeah. Google's, Google. well, yeah, but people know to go to apple.com and they buy all sorts of Apple shit. Google Play, it, you have to go play.google.com to go to their store. So it's a little bit more. Or I just go to Google, you Google type Chromecast. Type Google Store and it takes me there. Okay, yeah, all right, all right, fine. Fine, be that way. Still, it's it's yeah. th this is the only the only the only comment I have about the uh, the new Chrome cast on is why those fucking colors. <laughs> what you don't want lemonade? It's, you don't want your Chromecast in lemonade? It's a, it's a device you hook up to your, your TV. It looks like a fucking air freshener is what it looks like. You don't care about. You don't want to attract attention to necessarily. And now it's bright yellow or bright red. It, lo it looks like a fucking air freshener. Yes. <laughs> the first thing I saw about it, I'm like, ooh, does it come in pine? <laughs> I wonder if it still has the same features where you can plug in uh, the Ethernet slash power adapter to it. Um, Ethernet, I didn't see. Power adapter, yeah. Um, well, it has that power. But, you know, I have the Ethernet power adapter where you, you plug in 
uh, an Ethernet cable on one side, you plug it in the, the, the other. USB pa power in the other. Yeah, I, I didn't know, see that. That that would be unfortunate because sometimes you want a direct connection. <sighs> but in any event, yeah, Amazon, get over yourself. That that's just not cool, man. That's not cool. All right, so we've done the news. Let's get to the questions. We've got we got a, a the fairly. I'm not really having to do a whole lot of research on these this week, which I kind of like. Less work for me, but no, I still had to look some stuff up. Um, start. We got a question from Diego here. Uh, hello, Nash and producer asshole Mike. I'm not kidding. Hey, that's it. That's, hey. <laughs> well, that, that's hurtful. He's seen the shit you request, dude. Okay. I mean, fuck's sake. Oh, I found a great Christmas request. I'm just waiting for this one. <sighs> Nine months ago, I finished building my gaming PC. You want to know how long you think it'll last me? Um, give me specifications. Want to note, I'm not the kind of guy who needs everything to run on Ultra with 60 frames per second. I honestly can't tell between 30 and 60 most of the time. My PC has a GeForce GTX 760, Intel Core i5-4950, 8 gigabytes of RAM, thinking I should get another 8, and Windows 7, waiting on some driver news before I go to Windows 10. So what do you think? Will this last me to the end of the decade? Will we be able to run Batman Arkham Knight or Metal Gear Solid 5? Okay. Um, I'd say the weak points in the system based on stuff that would be the RAM. I'd certainly get the 8, eight gigs yeah, of RAM. Yeah, it's cheap as hell. You might as well. And I'm, I'm, I'm that guy who thinks you never have enough RAM, even though a lot of stuff is offloaded to the video card these days. I never have enough RAM. It's just, I'm not really using much of it. I still could add more, sure. I got 64 gigabytes. But you do a lot more video editing. Yeah. What, I, oh, man, did you see I posted the other day when I was rendering a video? And it, it, my, my processor pegged it. I've got the thing overclocked. It pegged it. Four point, it's a... Uh, for those of you really geeky folks at home, um, I run the show on an i7-4930K. It's a six-core processor. Um, I've got it overclocked. It was pegging out at 4.88 gigahertz for long stretches of time while it was rendering the video. My computer hates me. <laughs> it hates me. All right. So, yeah, like Mike said, the first thing, you want to upgrade the RAM. Now, you know you have an i5-4930. Uh, no, sorry, i5-4590. What am I saying? Word's not good. i5-4590. That's a good gaming uh, CPU, honestly. Um, when it comes to the gaming CPUs, you really don't need an i7. Uh, for those of you who are out there who are shopping for a new processor, you're thinking... Should I get an i5 or should I get an i7 if you're looking at the Intel stuff? The big difference, there are some others, but the big separator between an i5 and an i7, the i7 can hyperthread and the i5 can't. What's hyperthreading? Well, uh, it essentially allows you to run twice as many instructions on a single core as not. If you don't understand what that means, don't worry about it. You're never games. Most video games do not multi-core much. They're no. only just now starting to get optimized for multi-core support. But by and large, a quad-core processor, a quad-core i5, and a quad-core i7 are going to run exactly the same. It's when you're talking about video games. It's just how that how people write the video games at this point. They, they don't do a whole lot of multi-threading. Now, if you're also going to use your machine for video editing and uh, CAD and um, audio stuff, stuff that requires heavily threaded processes or, or um, rendering code, whole bunch of shit like that, you want an i7. But most of you out there who are gamers are never going to touch that shit. And an i5 will do you just fine. i5 is the sweet spot. i3 is more of a, I'm going to get on on Chrome and check my Facebook. That's what that's what your i3 is I'm for. I'm using Office products. I'm using, that's what your i3. i5 is your sweet spot for gaming. So as far as your gaming process is concerned, you should be good. Five years will last you on that. No problem. Because 
those really haven't gotten so much faster in the past few years anyway. The GeForce GTX 760, that's not going to last you five years. I'm, I'm sad to say right no. now. Might last two? Uh, two or three. Um, even a 760 is pushing it on some games. You'd have to drop down some of your settings to to make it look to make it run a little more smoothly i'd honestly if i were you i would think about investing in an i uh, in a geforce uh gtx 960 that's or not 70 970 is not that expensive right now yeah that's true you could find a 960 or 970 and 970 is a really really good card for the price that's what i have um you can you can poke around and see, uh, but for right now, you should be okay. The, the thing to note, though, remember when upgrading video cards to check the power, power requirements. Yep. Make sure your power supply can handle it. My old card uh, actually used more power than the GTX 970, so I lucked out there. Oh, yeah, that's that's the, been the great thing about the, the 900 series GeForce cards. They use much less power than their predecessors, which is, is nice. Uh, I'm using a GTX 770. I haven't really maxed it out. Eventually, I'll have to upgrade it, but I've got other shit to worry about right now. So, But meanwhile, having a, a 770 is fine. It's fine. You, you could probably get by on the 760 for another year or so, but expect before we get to 2020, you're, that, that's the one thing about, about uh, PC gaming. The video card is the thing you're going to have to replace most often. Every two to three years. That's just how it is. It's, it's, the games go faster. They get better. It's, it's... <sighs> so, yeah. Otherwise, you should be just fine. All right, let's see what else we have. Oh, this one's actually kind of a little complicated. This is, uh, Michael writes us. Uh, recently, I've been... Not you. Different no, Michael. Not me. Different Michael. Uh, recently, I've been forced to use a VGA cable with audio in out for my laptop to connect my TV uh, to it as a second screen. Before, I've been using my HDMI, but a change in TV services took that option away from me. I'm not exactly sure what that means, but okay. Uh, audio through HDMI had previously been somewhat dual channeled, where most audio notifications came from my TV and other audio, namely Skype, came from my laptop under VGA. The TV doesn't register as an audio output device, though through headphone jacks and the VGA cable is playing all the audio from my laptop. Yeah, is there any way to do that dual channel audio through VGA? That is entirely going to depend on whatever HDMI to VGA adapter you're using. Yeah, if you, a cheap one won't do it, a more expensive one will, is the short answer. Yeah, here's the, the, the thing most people, uh, well, some people understand. Uh, uh, HDMI cable is a wonderful, wonderful device because essentially HDMI is a DVI cable with audio added and some other nice features too, like uh, there's the ability to, on certain TVs, you can have everything controlled from one device thanks to an HDMI. I forget what the, the protocol is. Um, and uh, higher video rates, different functions that the cable provides that's built into it. It's very nice. But when you have to step backwards and use an adapter to an older video standard, you lose that audio connection and you have to get the audio from a different output. Um, that's why a lot of people, they have, uh, if they're still using a little bit older hardware, if they have to go to an older... Um, uh, monitor, they have to use an audio cable separate from the video cable. And in this case, I, I've seen the type of adapter he's talking about. It's uh, got a little standard, do I have a headphone jack? Oh yeah, here. Your standard 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. That's what it's using to output the audio to, which is great if you're just doing it to your headset, but if you're trying to plug that into, say, a television, you can do it with some adapters, but getting that audio signal to go, in this case, stereo, I think is the problem going on here. You can do a splitter. I mean, I've done it before, but it was it was daisy chained to hell, and I don't remember exactly how I did it. I think maybe, uh, to answer Michael's question, I think the problem here, maybe he's just using... 
he might need a better VGA adapter. Yeah. Uh, uh, one thing to, to check with the uh, with the what? I'm sorry. What's the form factor on that headphone jack? Is it eighth inch? It's not eighth inch. Sixteen mil. Three point five millimeter. Three point five. The one little one. I always I always messed that up. The one little thing one. to check with the three point five millimeter jacks is it's very easy to pick up a mono jack and not a stereo jack when yeah. you meant to get one or the other. Uh, hey, I can so actually show you. Um, at least on the the male connector here, you can see these little rings that I'm moving my finger over. You can't see very well. I'm going to move it closer. I should move it a little bit higher. I, well, that's for you. There are two cameras here. Okay. Um, the uh, These little rings, each one of these denotes a separator that handles a different audio channel. And in this case, this one has three on it because one of them is actually for the mic channel because this is a... Uh, Combo. Yeah, it's for a, a, a smartphone. But normally, there are just two there. That's for stereo. If there's one, that's for mono. Right. Or if it's... Yeah. And it has to have a similar jack to plug into that has the, the different raised parts that connect to those different channels. And if you, for some chance, got one that was a little bit of a cheaper adapt HDMI to VGA adapter, you likely got one with a mono connector on it, and there might be your problem. Um, my best advice, on, and you can find more of them, like, on Amazon or Google. Hey, we're plugging Amazon again. Um, you can probably find different models on there. I'd try another one. It probably wouldn't run you much more than $20 shipped. At most, I've seen them for far less. Try a different one. You're likely to maybe have a better result. That's just my my hunch on that one. Um, also, another question is, uh, what what speakers are you? Uh, yeah, your TV doesn't reach. Yeah, audio output device. Um, well, off a of VGA, I there's no there's no. Uh, uh, back yeah. channel to say, hey, there's something here, is there? No. Maybe a, a, a good check and see if your television uh, has um, RCA inputs. And what you can do very cheaply, go down to Radio Shack, get a... Nash. Nash. Oh, yeah, I know. Look Radio online. Shack. I know. I know. It makes me sad. Look online and find a 3.5 millimeter stereo to RCA adapter, depending on what type of television set you have. Um, I think most television sets still have uh, RCA inputs for audio. I hope they do. At least decent ones do. Otherwise, you may just have to get improvise and get a set of computer speakers and a really long extension cable to run to your laptop. That that might be another way to sort the problem for you. So yeah, uh, a uh, a place that might have that cable if you have one locally, it's it's hit or miss. Is actually a Guitar Center. They occasionally have stuff like that. So yeah, and just look online for uh, three point five millimeter. But also check to your television set and make sure it has RCA inputs. Because yeah, you don't want to buy the cable and go, oh, wait, where the hell does this plug in? I've seen some that have that have dropped RCA for um, uh, that multi-component output, that one that's got like red, blue, and green. Yeah, cable. yeah, yeah. And then there's also some that use SPDIF now, optical. Yeah. Uh, if your laptop is new enough, it might have that out. That would be cool. Wouldn't that be great? Just a boop, boop. I ne I've never, I've actually never used optical for audio. Neither have I. Be neat. Okay, let's move on. Let's see. Oh, there's a quick and easy one. Uh, Nagash is the name on this. Um, Nagash! Sounds like something out of the Cthulhu mythos. Nagash. I, uh, I, 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 Nagash Fatane. So what's he got? I'm looking to get a new PC at some point in the near future. My question is, how much RAM to get? My main intention to use it for gaming, some intention to stream, and possibly record some videos. Money's not an issue. I'm after as many viewpoints as possible. 
Money is not an issue. Oh, um, these days, pretty much, uh, it, it's always gotten a little incrementally higher as the years gone on. But right now, we're still hovering in the area where 16 gigabytes is considered about standard. Eight gigabytes is about entry level, whereas before four gigabytes was entry level. But we've gotten to a point where it, it, 16 gigabytes is about the middle of the road. Um, so yeah, that that you you shouldn't really for the type of stuff you're talking about here, you shouldn't really need much more than 16 gigabytes. I have 64 because I'm an imbecile. <laughs> And I keep all the windows open, and I run this show, and I record it, and I edit it, and all this shit. So 64. But for just about everybody else, 16 gigabytes is middle of the road. For the type of uh, stuff you're talking about, I don't think you're going to max it out too heavily. So, And the great thing about RAM is, if you need more, you can get it. Isn't that awesome? Just boop, bloop, plug the shit in, you're good to go. Well, Depending on which, uh, he said laptop, right? Um, no, he didn't mention laptop or desktop. However, that is a good point. Um, laptop With laptops, you might have memory, memory installation issues. Uh, yeah. Some of them, some of them come slap full, and you've got to replace. You go, oh, it has twelve. I wanted to go to twenty-four. I've got to pull out all twelve and buy, you know, sticks twice the size. Of course, do before you do something like that, check to make sure the motherboard can actually support those. That's another... Uh, I hate doing that on laptops. That's annoying. Yeah, especially since uh, with... And this is, this is... With some model laptops, the memory uh, goes on two different sides of the motherboard. Mm -hmm. So to take out half the memory, there's just a little panel you have to take off. To replace the other half of the memory... You have to take the so keyboard out! Take the keyboard out or just what is that? Thing. Have you? I've seen those too. Those when I, back when I was fixing laptops, that was the most annoying fucking thing. Well, it's half a the thing. half the RAM is under the fucking keyboard. Are you stupid? I've replaced keyboards and laptops too. So yeah, but that's just annoying, especially for end use. Half the RAMs it, it it takes twice as goddamn long. Just put them both on the bottom. Under that fucking cover. I hate when, when laptop manufacturers do that shit. Well, most of the laptops I've dealt with lately at work, uh, we've been adding memory to them, and they don't have the memory under the panel. It's all under the keyboard. So it's just a case of take off the panel, put in more memory, close it up. Mm. And they call that our, uh, what do they call that? Our, our mid-cycle tech refresh, add memory. Uh, John P. has a question. How would you personally go about setting up an emulated 16-bit window environment on a modern 16-gigabyte i7 Win 10 Toshiba laptop? Emulation software, Windows version, settings, etc. Ooh. Uh, well, my first question would be, uh, can you afford VMware? <laughs> I know, right? Um, your best bet is always going to be uh, with this sort of thing. I, I know lots of people do this, especially for gaming. Um, you're going to want to try using uh, a virtual machine of some kind. Yeah, because uh, one of the big things you can do there that could be very important is adjust your clock speed settings. So it's that, you know, I'm running at, my machine is running at 3 gigahertz, but I've taken the 16-bit virtual machine down to uh, half a gigahertz. So that way, when I run the thing there, it doesn't go, done. What happened? I didn't even get to move my tank. The, uh, Alan in the channel mentions that uh, VirtualBox is, yeah, that's a good free alternative to okay. VMware because VMware is stupid expensive. Yes, but very easy to configure. It is. Um, when we say virtual machine, it's a wonderful bit of technology that popped up in the past few uh, decade or so. It's software that allows you to pretty much build a computer inside your computer. It's a little bit, little tiny thing that's little little window that that window is a whole new computer. And and it may or may not have access to the internet or yeah. you can set it up so it doesn't have access to the internet or it can't access certain drives or things like that, uh, which is very useful in a work environment. In a home environment, maybe not so much, though I would, this is just me from a security standpoint, if you're setting up a virtual machine 
for a, a an older, unsupported operating system, I personally would not let it have access to the internet. Yeah, because it doesn't because have security. Because it's not necessarily going to be secure. Yeah, and it could potentially bleed through if you're not don't have it complete, configured properly. It could access your drives and your other information, and yeah. Um, as to which version of Windows, I I would go with like Windows ninety eight, wouldn't you, for sixteen bit? Uh, did well Windows seven had a thirty two bit, which had a sixteen bit version, didn't it? Sixteen bit emulator inside it. Yeah, but well, it's I can't. I, I, I would, would ninety eight or two thousand. Yeah, because. <laughs> A lot of people hate 2000, but yeah, uh, Windows 98, um, yeah, sure, should work 16, but no problem. 2000, it's, it's just so close to NT. It always, it, the biggest problem with, with Windows 2000, while it worked fantastic, if you had any sort of gaming attempts with it, especially drivers for sort of different things, you didn't like that at all. Uh, one other thing to note when building an emulator like this, or a virtual machine like this, uh, you may have drive issues. Uh, 98, I don't remember what support it had for NTFS. So your current Windows 8 or 10 machine, which is probably running NTFS as its file system, uh, you might not be able to access drives in the way you used to. It should sort of pass through things, but I've uh, run into once or twice where it was really, and it may have just been the guy who set it up, clicked the wrong options, but it's, it's something to take note of. Oh yeah, VMware Player is free. True. But yeah, it's not extensive, it can't, can't do all that much, but for what you're talking about doing here, yeah. Uh, now, you are still going to have to have a more or less legitimate copy of the operating system you wish to run. VMware player and like will not say, oh yeah, here's 98. But you're gonna have to you're gonna have to install Windows on yeah. on your imaginary computer. <laughs> In the future, amazing. We're going to give you an imaginary computer. Now you have to set it up. But it's imaginary. Too fucking bad. Uh the uh, other neat thing about uh, virtual machines, this is just in general, uh, and I know someone who does this. He has his main operating system, which has, you know, all his data and his installs. But then he has a virtual machine, which is what he uses to access the Internet. He doesn't access the Internet from his normal login, yeah. just from the virtual machine. That way, in case he gets computer herpes or something, he just wipes the virtual machine and starts over. Yeah. Because it's all inside that encapsulation. Computer herpes. That's a real thing. Your computer can get herpes. In case you didn't know. That shit's forever. I, I was thinking actually more um, ice pirates. The ship has herpes. <laughs> that was such a bad movie. God, that was an awful fucking movie. Ice pirates. Jesus Christ. All right. Well, what else we got? Well, we were coming up on the top of the hour. Let me see. Do we have another quick one we can do? Let's see here. Yeah, we said enough. We can do at least one more, I think. Okay. All right. Ryan's got one. We'll close out on. Just moved into a new apartment a few weeks ago, and I have contacted Verizon in order to get an internet connection. I was given the option to rent or buy my modem. Having used Verizon modems before, I knew the modem router would not be worth buying for $200 plus. I know you've already recommended a router. I was wondering if you had a recommending recommender as what kind of router I should consider. I think it's a typo. You meant modem. I should consider getting. If it makes any difference, I cheaped out on a 50-50 connection and at most have two devices going at one time. Um, are you, you well that, that's the question. You're using cable. Does Verizon use cable? I, I doubt they're using DSL for a I think so. Well, they might be using DSL depending on where they are. Um, the first thing to do is check Verizon's website to see what modems they allow because every company has a, a short list of what they'll allow uh, because they've got to be able to do some configuration stuff or they've got to be able to talk to it with their software. 
and they don't want to support every damn model out there, which is kind of understandable from a tech tech point of view. I I will point out uh, one that that's pretty well supported across every, Comcast, Charter, um, Warner Brothers. About every cable service I've seen out there supports. Uh, and, and double check yourself. Make sure Verizon will support this. Um, the Motorola Surfboard uh, SB6140, I believe. Let me double check to make sure I got the number right. That's the Motorola Surfboard SB6140. Yeah. Uh, oh, I... 6140 or 6141? Let me double check. Uh... I guess 6141 might be a slightly new, newer model. I have a 6140. Well, 60, I know the 6141 supports Doxis 3. That's the... Well, mine, mine supports Doxis 3, too. Okay. But just just making sure. All right. Well, check check on that one. 6140 or 6141. Um, I've owned several of those. There, it, it is $100. Uh, I see it on Amazon right now for 83 but... Well, yeah. But... In the long run, hey, Amazon, keep recommending fuck, fucking Amazon everywhere. Um, in the long run, it will pay off, especially considering modem rental fees. Over the course of a year, you'll have paid for it. You'll have paid for it. Over the course of two years, you'll have paid for it again. Over the course of four years, you'll have kept paying for that son of a bit. Never rent your modem. If you ever get the option. Never, ever, 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 ever rent your cable modem. Never do it. It is such a scam. You might go $80 up front, might seem like a lot, but when you look at your cable bill over and four years later, you realize you've paid $400 for a piece of crap. For a piece of shit that they gave you down that that they sent you in the in the mail, you're like, oh, I have a modem. And it's a piece of shit, and you spent $400 for it. Well, you could have just spent $80 for it up front. Uh, okay, so yeah. I, I'm looking at the uh, SB6141. Uh, uh, just to note here, it says not compatible with Verizon Fire, uh, Fios, because it is a cable modem, uh, or AT&T Uverse. So do check right. their website, see what they support. Well, for one thing, Fios is fiber optic. So cable yes. modem's not going to be compatible. And AT&T Uverse is DSL. So a cable modem is not going to be compatible. Yeah they're, yeah, they're spelling it out for people just in, in, in case. Yeah, if you're using Veri- if you're using a cable modem for Verizon, go with that. But it, it, now, if it's a Verizon FiOS, you may be fucked. But what speed did they say they were? 50-50. Uh, 50. 50 up, 50 down. And they, said they, cheap, they cheaped out on 50-50? I'd love to have 50-50. I would, too. I, well, they, pro- they they may have competition in the area. Lucky sons of bitches. I keep trying to convince Google to roll out here. <sighs> Check and see if you have Sonic anywhere near you. Don't think I do, but... Damn. They're another, they're another competitor that's been dropping fucking Comcast prices just by being in the area. So... All right. Well, that will pretty much wrap it up for us this this uh time out if you if you have more questions your question to get answered go ahead and send it to us we'll try and get to it next time uh next time will be in two weeks yeah um send it to request at radio.air.com put tech q a in the subject line we'll see what we can do about it meanwhile uh thanks mike sure for, for the nonsense and uh we'll see you back here next time goodbye folks yeah Dude, Mike, your beard just keeps getting longer and longer. What are you feeding that thing? Toddlers.